information provided by Shingles. Some describe it as pulsing electric shocks or sharp stabbing pains. This painful blistering rash can disrupt your life for weeks. A pain so intense, you could miss out on family time. The virus that causes shingles is likely already inside of you. If you're 50 years or older, ask your doctor or pharmacist about shingles. Tomorrow on ET, our Top Gun Maverick exclusive. As an audience, you go, I want to be part of that world. Only we have the never-before-seen footage from the aircraft carrier set. But we're going to leave you now with the movie star of movie stars, Miss mm. Diane Keaton. Her new film, Mac and Rita, is out tomorrow. But today, I was there as Diane cemented her legendary status at the TCL Chinese Theater in Hollywood. I can't tell you how much I love that lady. And the joy coming from her today, mm. y'all, it was palpable. It's a movie star. Good night, everybody. See y'all. Today was, if you had to put it in a sentence. Yeah, lucky that I was invited. This is to mom and dad. You know, I'm still that happening now. With power bills through the roof, the city is getting more money back than expected from CPS Energy, and it's considering kicking $50 million back to you. The details coming up. And in just a bit, a very close look at the radar where the heavy rain is falling. And if you miss out today, you have more opportunities. We're going to talk about that in just a bit. And cell phone bills here in Texas are set to increase as soon as next month. Coming up, ways you can cut your bill down, maybe even cut it in half. The News at 5 starts right now. And we're starting off with a look at radar. This is what we like to see. Scattered areas of rain and not just rain, but some heavy downpours out there as well, especially south down I-35 just moved through Divine, Natalia, Bigfoot area down toward Pearsall and Dilly. That's scattered activity through Frio County. But let's focus here on Bear County and even surrounding communities. And you see this heavy rain moving north to south, a little bit on the west side, but the heaviest right now and the most electrified, which really isn't saying much, but there's a little bit of lightning and thunder with it. That's here on the east side moving into Windcrest. Now this is moving to the south at about 15 miles per hour. I actually like the slow movement because that extends the amount of time that it can rain. And so for communities downstream from this downpour that we have right here, we're talking Wagner High School at about 514. Houston High School, that would be at about 520. 525 Boltville at 541 and East Central High School at 543 p.m. You zoom in here and I mentioned it's uh, basically moving into Windcrest right now. This is a part of town on the east side that did get some rainfall recently, so we'll take a look at the accumulations, but even some heavy rain near Randolph Road heading toward Crestway. So this is moving into the heart of Windcrest right here. This downpour that purple could have some very small non damaging hail, but by and large, we're just looking at some good beneficial heavy rainfall with this farther to the northwest. Bernie southward toward Helotus, this activity that's pushing southward as well. And of course, we'll have a closer look at all this as and those showers coming up in just a few minutes. First of all, Leon Springs already nearly half an inch shirts over a third of or about a third of an inch. Myco over half an inch so far today. We'll talk about rainfall chances for the days ahead because this isn't it. Coming up in just a bit. Steve Ursula. Man, is all that a sight for sore ground? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dry ground. Yeah, and that would take a traffic look outside, and we just want to show you the rain, not so much the traffic. This is 1604 at Pat Booker Road in the heart of the area that Adam was just showing you. And look at that temperature as well. 80 degrees. Is that for real? Yeah. Wow, we haven't seen that in a long time. It's a $3.4 billion discussion, but the big focus during today's city council meeting was $50 million in rebates you may qualify for. It's a CPS Energy customer rebate, possibly coming as soon as this fall. Yeah, as temperatures and energy bills soar, CPS Energy expected to bring in $75 million more than expected for the current fiscal year. Alicia Barrera explains why some city council members question whether when it is all said and done, is this rebate actually enough? We are trying to do our part. Extreme heat has led to extreme balances for CPS Energy customers. The average residential electrical bill in the month of July was $230. Which is why city staff is proposing some relief that would reflect in customers' October energy bills. An average of $31 credit 
that would be applied to an October bill. While some city leaders are on board. I think that's reasonable, even though it's not going to be nearly what they've been experiencing in terms of, of the pain. Other council members. This is just a credit and it's going to ensure that CPS bills get paid, basically. Say different issues need to be addressed. I'm often reminded that potholes, that streets, um, maintenance, uh, it, it's not, um, it, it really is nonpartisan, right? I'd actually like to see um, that money spent in the following ways um, on domestic violence initiatives. I'd like to see a $25 million increase. Yet for most, weatherization is top of mind. They don't have insulation, their windows are insufficient, and that's not something that $31 is going to fix. If we don't learn from this summer that this is the new normal, then when will we ever learn? For the funds to be reflected in October bills, it will need to be voted on by September. However, City Council says more discussion needs to happen, which will begin next week during the first budget work sessions. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Update now on a fatal shooting from Monday. The man found dead in his apartment identified as 18 year old Lawrence Anthony Thomas. The shooting happened on Lamar Street near North New Braunfels and Gabriel on the east side. San Antonio police first called the scene for a stabbing. They later found Thomas had been shot and killed. A motive unknown. No one has been arrested. San Antonio police are also investigating a shooting that unfolded on the city's west side overnight. They say a man was shot in his jaw at around 2.45 this morning. Now, this was in the 700 block of San Bernardo Avenue near South General McMullen and Castorville Roads. Investigators say that the man was taken to the hospital and is expected to recover. They picked up about 32 shell casings at the scene. At last check, there were no witnesses. They were shot and killed at an apartment complex, a complex rather late last month. Now Crime Stoppers need your help finding the people who are responsible. Yeah, the victims are 15 year old Angel Ray Garcia and 19 year old 19 year old Gregoria Cordova Mejia. The two died on July 29th at the Union Pines apartment complex. It's on Pleasanton Road near West Gerald Avenue. San Antonio police found one of them at the top of a staircase, the other in a breezeway. If you have any information on who killed them, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. And take a good look at this car. Crime Stoppers believes it's connected to the shooting deaths of Luis Flores. He died on July 31st when he was shot in a parking lot on South Flores Street across from R&J Saloon. San Antonio police say that Flores was waiting for his food outside of his, his inside of his truck when he got out. Three people then jumped into his Cadillac parked behind him. They robbed Flores of his truck, shot him in the process before then taking off. If you have any information about the case, call Crime Stoppers. The number is 210-224-STOP. This afternoon, we're learning more about the FBI's raid of former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. ABC News reporting that Trump was subpoenaed in the spring for documents he's believed to have taken from the White House. He never turned over to federal investigators those documents, apparently. Right now, it's unclear if he ever handed them over following that subpoena. We've also learned earlier this year several boxes containing classified information were taken from Trump's Florida home. Today, Attorney General Merrick Garland defending the FBI and saying he will not stand by silently when their integrity is being attacked. Justice Department has filed a motion in the Southern District of Florida to unseal a search warrant and property receipt relating to a court-approved search that the FBI conducted earlier this week. I personally approve the decision to seek a search warrant in this matter. It will detail exactly what the FBI was looking for and what they found. Trump could have revealed himself what the FBI took from his home, but he hasn't yet. And this isn't the only legal case against the former president. This week, Trump pled the fifth in a deposition with a New York State attorney with New York State Attorney General Letitia James, who's investigating him for tax fraud. The number of monkeypox cases in Bear County increasing today to 17. That's one more case than was reported yesterday. Because across the country, new cases are also growing. There is a new strategy to stretch the supply of monkeypox vaccines. Here's how it'll work. 
but we're taking a little bit of a leap here in recognition of the severity um, of the epidemic right now. As monkeypox cases continue to climb, supplies are being stretched. An FDA emergency use authorization now allows for doses to be cut to one fifth of what they were allowing for five doses out of a standard one dose vial. But will it provide the same protection? There's a really good set of data from a wide set of vaccines, not just for smallpox, but also flu and rabies, that this way of administering vaccines can actually be more effective. Monkeypox is a virus in the same family as the one that causes smallpox. For the smaller dose to be effective, health experts say it has to be given between the layers of the skin rather than under the skin, as it had been given before. It creates an equivalent immune response and so therefore quite likely equivalent protection. Officials say this move could increase the number of vaccine doses in the national stockpile from 441,000 to more than 2.2 million. However, there will be a learning curve. The folks who are giving it are going to have to use different needles, draw up different amounts. So there's going to be an element of training that's going to have to go along with it. FDA says that this new method of administrating the vaccine results in more redness, firmness, itchiness, and swelling at the injection site. Those studies had less pain, though, and manageable side effects. Now to the latest on the economy and a potential sign that inflation may actually be slowing. The Labor Department announcing wholesale prices fell last month. This could be due in part to falling gas prices, but as ABC's Rena Roy explains, Americans still digging deeper into their pockets for things like food and rent. Signs of hope that inflation may potentially be cooling down, with wholesale prices down 0.5% last month, falling for the first time in nearly two years. Consumer prices are 8.5% higher compared to a year ago, which is high, but better than expected. It tells us that prices are still elevated, but that we're starting to see some pricing pressures ease. All of this partly due to gas prices, which are down across the country. Gas energy in general makes up such a huge part of the inflation picture. So the fact that it's starting to come down, definitely welcome relief. The national average now below $4. That's 7.7% lower than last month. In June, we saw gas soar above $5 a gallon. Even though it's gone down, and I appreciate that, it's still unreasonable. While these new reports are a relief on Wall Street, experts say the economy is not yet in the clear. Even though we've turned a corner on inflation, we're not out of the woods yet, according to economists. As far as the broader economy, it is likely, according to economists, that we will still face a mild recession ahead. Americans are still shelling out about $460 more for the same goods and services compared to this time last year. Prices for food up 11 percent over the last year, the largest 12-month increase since 1979. When you try to juggle home and bills and stuff, you just got to like, you got to, uh, it's, it's no way you can balance all of it at the same time. And when it comes to the job market, most economists say we are in good shape with 500,000 jobs added in July, but still the number of people applying for unemployment benefits has gone up for two weeks straight. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Well, with the prices we're all facing, we're all looking for ways to save. So why not start with your cell phone bill? Some tips when we come back. Myra Arthur here in the KSAT newsroom with a look at some of the stories we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock today. Some gruesome details told to a jury in the trial of a man who's accused of killing a woman with an axe. Rafael Castillo is on trial for the murder of Nicole Perry in 2020. Erica Hernandez shares testimony from that witness describing what he saw. The San Antonio City budget is set to grow by hundreds of millions of dollars next year, but it also includes a cut to the tax rate and possibly a chance to get back some of the money you've paid to CPS Energy. Garrett Berger has the details. He'll explain all that coming up at 6. That and more in less than an hour. We'll see you then. Thank you, Myra. Let's move to money now. And that cell phone bill, the average bill, $100 a month. So 12 in your sides, Marilyn Moritz walks us through some steps that can lower your bill, maybe even slice it in half. 
Jack Van Pell pays about $72 a month for unlimited talk and text with AT&T. Jack's phone is an older Samsung Galaxy S7. But look, Jack pays $8.99 a month for insurance. When he files a claim, it will cost him a $125 deductible, twice what his phone is even worth. If your phone's older, it might be worth completely removing your cell phone insurance. Nerd Wallet's Kelsey Sheehy says to save money, sign up for auto pay. Simply signing up for automatic payments can knock five to ten dollars off your monthly bill. And depending on your provider, that could be five to ten dollars per line. Those two changes would knock Jack's bill down to about $53, saving $227 a year. But if Jack is willing to switch providers and go with one that piggybacks off a larger company's network, he could cut his bill by more than half. Most people don't realize these so-called lower tier car carriers actually use the same networks as the big three providers. And some of them are even owned by a major carrier. Cricket Wireless is owned by AT&T, Jack's current network. Here's a plan for 30 bucks a month for the same coverage. And there's no contract. You won't sacrifice coverage, but with lower tier carriers, your data speeds may be slowed during peak times. Next tip, get a friends and family plan. You don't even need to live in the same house. For example, at Verizon, a new welcome unlimited plan is $65 for one line. But sign up five lines, it's just $25 a line. Finally, some cell plans include streaming services. So check your bill. You don't want to be paying for a subscription to something you're already getting. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. A lot of information in that story. I'm going to have to go back and look at it later. This, I'm soaking in right now. Look at that. Raindrops on our live cam. It is a beautiful sight, Adam Kasky. I just pushed out on our uh, Weather Authority app a time lapse of those showers moving in. So if you have our app and you enable the notifications, you'll be able to enjoy that beautiful sight and a bit of good news on this day today on this Thursday. Take a look at the rain activity. Uh, it's widespread. You saw the big view there, especially farther south of town. Dimmit, LaSalle, McMullen County is now getting some action, but I want to start up here in the Bernie area. This is where we left off earlier, and I know this big downpour is starting to really weaken and fall apart, but it's still drifting southward into northwestern Bear County, just clipping that eastern corner of Bandera County. We also have new development here from Cordillera Ranch to Bergheim right along 46. This is all pushing southward. So I know these showers are kind of short lived, but as one fizzles out, another one develops and pops up. So upstream where the rain is coming from, we have new development. Candelia as well. Wimberley, we just had a downpour pop up. Canyon Lake, I know it's just so close. You can smell it. You can see it. You just haven't had a lot of it. Don't worry, there are more opportunities over the next couple of hours. But what we're really focusing on here locally is we had this downpour move through the Stone Oak area, Camp Bullis, UTSA, all the way into Leon Valley, and then it rained itself out again. Fairly short lived, but at least it left some rain in its path. We'll take a look at accumulations in a moment. I want to get into where we have the heaviest downpour at the moment, and that's right over Windcrest on into Kirby. Look at this along I-35 where it connects with 410 at Windcrest, Roosevelt High School, Eisenhower Avenue here, Seguin Road, Riddiman Road. This is the heavy soaking rain along I-35. Could be some delays here. I-35 uh, basically just north of downtown could be some delays as a result of that heavy rain. Another thing I want to point out is we have a few of these outflow boundaries coming together. You know, these thunderstorms blow out some cool air. It hits the ground and it rushes outward. And a few of these outflow boundaries are coming together. Uh, right here, I'm going to draw them out. Here's one outflow boundary from Atkins to Boltville, and then another one that basically goes down into the south side. Where these are coming together, Elmendorf, Calaveras Lake, this whole area right here wouldn't surprise me if we see uh, more development there momentarily as those outflow boundaries collide and generate some lift up into the atmosphere. Okay, I promised accumulations. Let's take a look at it here. Here we go. This is just 12 hours. This is just today. This doesn't even take into account yesterday. I'm sorry, southeast side, even downtown, not your day so far. There's still a few hours left, but let's get right into Windcrest where we've had some of that heaviest rainfall, and this is near a part of town where we actually had some rainfall yesterday as well. Randolph Road and 35.8, and it's still raining here. 
nearly an inch of rain in that location and it's still coming down. Not to mention they also had some rainfall yesterday on the northeast side of town. So you take that into account. You get up near Madison High School and it's nearly an inch of rainfall there near Madison High School when you take into account the rainfall that we had yesterday. Actually 1.8 inches when you look at the latest info there isn't that great. OK, let's talk big picture. Rain chances dropping after sunset by 10 o'clock, only a 20% chance. Here's the big picture really quickly. Another disturbance over the Gulf. Look at that rain it's causing. That's going to be sliding eastward this weekend, keeping rain chances alive Saturday and Sunday. So tomorrow we're talking a 30% chance, 40% chance Saturday, and then a 30% chance again on Sunday. Tomorrow, just a few widely separated. We're talking isolated showers, 98 degrees. The high temperature will be in the mid 90s through the weekend with at least some rain chances through Sunday. Thank you so much, Adam. All right, in Tampa Bay, they're talking about the Brady break. Yeah, and who knew you would do that in the middle of training camp? We're talking about Tom Brady, who's not with the Buccaneers as we speak. When we come back, we'll let you know what's going on there, because remember, they start against the Dallas Cowboys, and we're visiting Marion and Bulldog Country today in our big game previews coming up. Camping with KZAN, powered by Davis Law Firm. In an unusual move, quarterback Tom Brady, who will start against the Dallas Cowboys in the regular season opener, has left the Tampa Bay Buccaneers training camp to deal with some personal things. That's according to Bucks head coach Todd Bowles after he says he and Brady discussed his absence prior to training camp. Even starting, he said Brady didn't want to miss time building chemistry with his teammates in the first two weeks and decided it was best to take time off after that in order to give some reps to the backups like Blaine Gabbard and Kyle Trask. The plan now is to bring Brady Brady back after next week's preseason game against the Tennessee Titans. The UTSA Roadrunners have been working on their defense since winning their first ever conference USA championship. Clifford Chapman is a 6'5", 195-pound safety who's pushing himself to make the starting lineup as a redshirt senior. It's after the Texas A&M transfer suffered a freak injury after four games in the last season. And now we are hearing from Clifford himself how that injury occurred going up against his own teammates. It was a crazy injury. Like, I, all I, like, we was in practice and I was going one on one for Leroy, and I kind of got my hand stuck into his shoulder pads, and and I ripped my tendon, and they call they call that a jersey finger. So I ripped my tendon, and I had to get surgery. So it was like it was, it was a decision I had to make whether I was gonna finish out the season, uh, come back and get a medical red shirt. So I decided just to come back another year, and just you know, what I'm saying, be with these guys one more year, and just. Reach, reach my full potential while I can. All right, Clifford's comeback is another reason to cheer on the UTSA Roadrunners this year when they host Houston in the Alamo Dome in their season opener September the 3rd at 2.30 p.m. Our big game previews continue today with a visit to Marion to check out the Bulldogs. After making the playoffs and finishing the 7-4 record as a bi-district finalist, head coach Ryan Miller welcomes back 13 starters, 7 on offense, 6 on defense. Linebacker Cross Kelso leads the D with his 102 tackles, including 17 for a loss and two interceptions to win district linebacker of the year and also making the district standout as running back Aiden Rios with over 1,200 yards rushing and 15 touchdowns. This is a definitely a special season. You know, I've been working hard basically my whole life uh, for this shot and I'm super excited. We're all ready. All of us are ready. We've been working this whole offseason to get as best as we can to get ready for that first day that we can actually show what we put in the work for. The winning kind of breeds uh, success and uh, it's contagious and they, these guys just kind of keep it rolling. All right, the Bulldogs kick off their season on Friday, August the 26th at home against Hondo at 7 p.m. And two weeks from today, Thursday, the high school football season kicks off total this when, opening When night. you said August 26th, I'm like, that's right around the corner. There is. Yeah. Do Don't forget the 27th. <laughs> yeah. There's a case at Pigskin Classic, I hear. There seems to be one, yeah. yes. I Thank you. <laughs> we'll be right back. All right, quick look at radar here and you see most of the action locally is on the east side of town. That's where we have the heaviest downpour. One also on the south side 35 and 4 10 near Palo Alto. More rain opportunities in the days ahead through Sunday. Mid 90s as well.